The 16-inch MacBook Pro was one of my most highly anticipated devices in 2019. The return to scissor switch keyboard, thinner bezels, and larger screen, all while maintaining the 15-inch footprint, was exactly what I wanted from a new MacBook. But when Apple announced the MacBook Air with M1, I was excited to see how it would compare. With reviews confirming Apple's bold performance claims, I knew I needed to try one out. So I purchased the base model MacBook Air with the 8-core CPU, 7-core GPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and with the only upgrade being the SSD at 512 gigs. Now this was not an obvious upgrade path from my current 16-inch MacBook Pro, with the i9, 16 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte SSD, and a Radeon 5500M dedicated graphic card. But Apple only released 13-inch variants of the M1 laptops. The 16-inch Pro is much larger and heavier than the Air. Even though I prefer the larger screen, the portability and lightweight design of the Air is really nice to have. The screen size is the first and most obvious difference. The 16-inch feels roomy when coding or video editing, and the thin bezels give it a more modern look compared to the thicker bezels on the Air. Both screens have true tone to adjust colors for a more natural look based on your surrounding light, and are equally sharp with 227 pixels per inch on the Air and 226 on the Pro. The MacBook Pro display gets a little brighter at 500 nits, compared to the Air at 400 nits. The brighter display could help visibility if in outside settings, but when indoors, both screens are plenty bright. Moving down to the keyboard, the MacBook Pro has the touch bar, one of the most controversial features and the largest difference between the two keyboards. Depending on the type of user, some may find the touch controls and app-specific functions useful. I personally find it to be annoying. As a developer, I'm constantly using the function keys. And even though you can set the touch bar to show the function keys by default, not having them as physical buttons forces me to look down every time I need to use them. I'm happy the Air does not contain the touch bar, and I consider this a positive for my uses. Both have the new Apple Magic Keyboard. This is a welcome return from the Butterfly Switch keyboard, which had higher than normal failure rates in previous models. I find the angle from the wedge shape on the Air gives a slightly more comfortable typing experience. Both have fantastic touchpads, still the best on any laptop. The 16-inch touchpad being much larger as there is more space available. The larger size does not cause any issues when typing due to the great palm rejection software. The MacBook Air speakers are great, but the 16-inch MacBook Pro speakers sound incredible. They are loud without losing quality, the bass is deep, and everything just sounds rich and clear. They do not sound like laptop speakers, you have to hear them in person to believe it. The Air speakers sound great, and it's impressive for a small chassis, but they just can't compare it to the 16-inch. My largest grievance with the Air is the port selection. Only having two ports is limiting, especially after growing used to the four ports on the MacBook Pro. The M1 also limits some of the functionality of these ports. With the M1, as of the time of this video, you cannot use external GPUs, and you cannot use more than one external display. This could be a deal breaker for users who need multiple external monitors, but for me, I'm perfectly happy with the one ultrawide. My current workflow consists of video editing with Final Cut Pro, front-end design and development using Visual Studio Code and Photoshop, remote desktop, browsing with Safari with a ton of tabs open, and some Apple Arcade gaming. I never encountered any slowdowns using the MacBook Pro 16 or in my two months of usage with the MacBook Air. And I think that is a testament to just how well the MacBook Air with M1 performs. The M1 is an ARM processor based on Apple's own technology, similar to what is found in the iPhones and iPads. ARM processors work off a different instruction set from Intel processors, meaning Apple has to create a translation layer to run Intel applications. Emulation layers can be slow and cause performance issues, but in Apple's translation layer, named Rosetta 2, every app I have used in real day-to-day -day use has been fast. I am unable to tell the difference between an Intel app and an Apple Silicon optimized app in day-to-day -day use unless I go to Activity Monitor to look. I have no complaints with performance on this machine, and the benchmarks back it up. The single core performance is very fast, faster than the i9. However, in multi-core tests, the Air cannot maintain as fast as the clock speed throughout the duration of the longer test and begins to throttle around 10 minutes in because it's not actively cooled by a fan. Even working with Final Cut Pro on the MacBook Air, it is still able to keep up with the 16-inch MacBook Pro in render times. Neither of these machines are gaming laptops. If you want a laptop for gaming, you'll want to look into a laptop like the Razer Blade 15. Subscribe to see my upcoming review 
However, if you want to play lighter games like Apple Arcade games, then the MacBook Air is good, but the MacBook Pro 16 is even better. And that's because the Pro has a dedicated GPU versus the integrated graphics found on the Air. Some slightly more demanding games like Tomb Raider will be playable on the 16-inch Pro, but the Air cannot keep up. I personally play more demanding titles on PC and PS5, but I do enjoy playing Apple Arcade games on the Air. Even while running these benchmarks, the MacBook Air would only get warm to the touch, whereas the Pro's fans will kick on and the area above the keyboard and the bottom will get hot. Too hot to want on my lap. Apple claims 18 hours of battery life on the MacBook Air. This is based on watching 1080p footage at around half brightness, or 8 clicks from the bottom. In my workflow, I'm able to go multiple days without charging. Now, I'm not claiming to edit video or play games for 18 hours straight, but with an hour or so of Apple Arcade games, a few hours of editing 4K video in Final Cut Pro, and the rest of the time coding and using Safari, I'm experiencing incredible battery life, better than any laptop I've ever used. With the MacBook Pro 16, I am unable to get through a day, especially if I am editing video. This is despite the fact that the MacBook Pro 16 has the largest battery allowed in a notebook at 100 watt hours, which is a testament to the efficiency that M1 chip provides in the MacBook Air. For most people looking for new Apple hardware, the Air is the way to go. Between the performance and the price, it's an easy recommendation. However, there are plenty of reasons to go with a 16 inch Pro. If you care a lot about graphics, want a larger screen, need more ports or the ability to install Windows via bootcamp, then it's a better option for you. If you're still wanting the 16 inch screen and want all the benefits the M1 chip offers, I would recommend holding off if you can. The heavily rumored 16 inch MacBook Pros with an M1X chip is likely to have double the cores and incredible performance based off of the leaked Cinebench benchmarks. Thanks for watching to the end. If you found the video helpful, please let me know by giving it a like. I hope to catch you in the next one.